Hey there, I pray this video encourages you and helps you grow and become more like Jesus. Follow along with the notes linked in the description. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Enjoy. I want to share with you a message called When Troubled Hearts Remember God. And I want you to know up front that the godly are not immune to hurt, trials, and tribulations. We're not immune to that. Yes, Jesus came to serve, to give us life, to set us free, to give us brand new life. But the reality is actually that the apostles even mentioned in the same paragraph of the beauty of salvation and the assurance of salvation, the apostles also mentioned that you'll go through trials. Let me give you uh, evidence point number one, 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9. If you will, look it on the screen with me. All praise to God. I love the scripture. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. So you're a new believer, a Christian, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. Isn't that good news? And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive the salvation. You have it now, spiritually, but physically, Jesus will come back, okay? And as we wait for him and have faith in him, God is protecting you by his power until you receive the salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. So there you have this celebration of salvation, and then a heads up, you're going to go through things. And he keeps going, so let's look at the scripture some more. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. In other words, do you have conditional faith? You'll believe in God as long as everything is going well, or will you believe in God even when things aren't going well? So he tests that to make sure you have unconditional faith. He loves you unconditionally. He wants to know that we love, love him unconditionally as well. Okay? He goes on to say, through your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. Wow. Wow. Though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. Praise God. Praise God. That we can love him even though we haven't seen him. We can trust him even though we haven't seen him. And if we do until the end, there will be a great reward. So we aren't supposed to necessarily avoid trials. We're supposed to go through them because it will mature our faith and test it to make sure that we love him unconditionally and that our faith is unconditional as well. What about Romans? So that was Peter. How about the apostle Paul? Romans 5, 1 through 5 says this for us. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. So that's salvation. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, salvation, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. So joyful while we wait, okay? Keep going. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. By the way, if you feel loved by God, it's because his spirit is in you. Now, when we go through things, we may not feel like God loves us. That is not true. Okay, he needs to teach us and grow our faith in those moments as well. All right? But I, what I like about this is God doesn't want us to get comfortable with this world. So he will, this is, this is going to seem strange to you if you're newer to the faith or reading the Bible. But God will allow us to go through things so we don't fall in love with this world. We actually see how this world does, is not reliable for us. He will allow that to happen so we'll continue to look forward in the new heavens and the new earth and for him. Our focus will be on him in the long run. 
Nothing's worse than getting salvation now and then being thanks God and then you forget about him while you're on earth. And so there have been times in the Old Testament where God allows his people or has his people go through trials to make sure they keep looking at him for deliverance and to get through the world. Okay? Now, James 1, 2 through 4 is very similar. So this is another apostle. It's the beginning of his book. And this is what he says, all right, for us as well. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, notice the word when, not if. Consider it an opportunity for great joy. That's three scriptures where when you're going through trials, you should have joy. I don't know how sometimes. You feel me on that? But it's true. Why? Because you put your hope on the future and you know that God is there. He's going to help you. That's how. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Do you know what happens when we go through trials or hurt or tribulations, when we get to the other end of it, we have experienced another dimension of God's grace that we wouldn't experience if we didn't go through it. I can testify to that. Can anyone else testify? Amen. You wouldn't have learned about God's power, his faithfulness, his goodness, his mighty works. You wouldn't see those if, if you were walking through a field and there was butterflies all around you and nothing bad ever happened. That would be nice. It's just not reality. And Jesus said this in John 16, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Do you know who the overcomers are in this world? Those who trust in Christ until the end. They will be overcomers in this world. This instruction to us right in salvation is, is, is this. He's come to give you life. You're going to go through hard times, but you're going to get through it. And, and it's, it's better to go through it with Christ than avoid it altogether. All right? I wish that was the case. I wish... Uh, well, no, that's monopoly. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. That's sad. Don't you love it, though, when you bypass the jail? Go to jail and you bypass that? That's the best. You want that in life, you know? Now, let's go a little deeper, though. Let's go to the Old Testament. Let's go to Psalm 77, because we've been through some dark times, right? And I think you could relate to this psalmist. His name is Asaph. He was a worship leader for David, and he and David would write songs about their experiences. So this is based off a of real-life experience, but we don't have the details of what it was. But I can relate to this guy. I think you can relate to this guy. And I, I hope that it encourages you how he handles his dark times and his difficult times. Psalm 77, one says, I cry out to God. Yes, I shout. Oh, that God would listen to me. Have you ever tried yelling to God to get his attention or you hear me, God? Amen. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. That's good. That's the right thing to do, right? All night long, I prayed with hands lifted toward heaven and God should answer, right? Not this time, but my soul was not comforted. Can you relate? I think of God and I moan and overwhelmed with longing for his help. You don't let me sleep. I am too distressed even to pray. Wow, have you been there before? I think, that, I think of the good old days long since ended when my nights were filled with joyful songs. I search my soul and ponder the difference now. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Will he never again be kind to me? Is his unfailing love gone forever? Have his promises permanently failed? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he slammed the door on his compassion? It's getting pretty tough here, isn't it? He's, he's sad. And I said, this is my fate. The Most High has turned his hand against me. Thank God he doesn't stop there, right? Otherwise, we'd be pretty depressed today. He says, but then I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. You see, church, we cannot stop at the doom and gloom. We must remember what God has done. 
He goes on to say this. They are his thoughts, right? Thoughts of God are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. Oh God, your ways are holy. They're just, they're right. Okay, is there any God as mighty as you? You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. By your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the Red Sea saw you, you remember when the Israelites were delivered from slavery in Egypt and they had to go through the Red Sea? He's recalling that moment. When the Red Sea saw you, O oh God, it was, its waters looked and trembled. In other words, they spread out. The sea quaked to its very depths. The clouds poured down rain. The thunder rumbled in the sky. Your arrows of lightning flashed. Your thunder roared from the whirlwind. The lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your road led through the sea, your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. Amen. How many know that you may not see the way out of what you're going through, but God sees it before you do? You led your people along that road like a flock of sheep with Moses and Aaron as their shepherds. And he just ends it abruptly right there because he writes more going along with that in Psalm 70 and on. Powerful scripture. When his heart was troubled, he comforted himself. Did you know that sometimes we got to comfort ourselves? He comforted himself with what? With God. And I'm not saying that this is what we tell people. You just got you just got to go to God. You just got to go to God. Just the quick answer like that, like Pastor Jody taught. Listen, we ourselves need to try God first and and stay with God all the time, right? Okay. Not everyone knows how to do that though. And all I'm saying is, I want to copy this scripture. I want to recall and remember what God has done in my life when I'm in a dark place. When I'm in a tough place, I want to look back and see that. Sometimes you need to comfort yourself with God's help. Amen? Sometimes you got to remind your soul, your whole being, that God is there and he's working even if you don't see it, he is working. Now let's go to a longer psalm. We can read the Bible in church, right? We can read long portions of scripture in church. Psalm 107, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Amen. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. For he has gathered the exiles from many lands, from east and west, from north and south. Now here's what happens. The psalmist writes about four situations where they cry out to God and God answers their cry. Okay? Okay. And then the ending is really key, what he says at the end. So here's one situation. Some wandered in the wilderness, lost and homeless, hungry and thirsty. They nearly died. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he rescued them from their distress. He led them straight to safety, to a city where they could live. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. Isn't that good? That when he delivers you, you also take the time to thank him. And notice that pattern in this as well. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with, God, with good things. Some sat in darkness in deepest gloom, imprisoned in iron, of, iron chains of misery. They rebelled against the words of God, scoring the counsel of the Most High. That is why he broke them with hard labor. They fell and no one was there to help them. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble. This reminds me when they were in Egypt. And he saved them from their distress when they cried out. He showed mercy and grace, even though they had been in the wrong before that, and other situations as well. And in fact, this situation is most likely referring to when they were taken captive into Babylon because of sin. So God shows up and helps them anyway. He led them from the darkest darkness and deepest gloom. He snapped their chains. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. For he broke down their prison gates of bronze. He cut apart their bars of iron. Some were fools and they rebelled and suffered for their sins. They couldn't stand the thought of food and they were knocking on death's door. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. There he goes again. He sent out his word and healed them, snatching him from the door of death. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and sing joyfully about his glorious acts. How about this? 
Some went off to sea in ships. So how about a physical trial, a real trial in a boat? Okay, like a physical storm. They were plying the trade routes of the world. They too observed the Lord's power in action, his impressive works on the deepest seas. He spoke and the winds rose, stirring up the waves. Their ships were tossed to the heavens and plunged again to the depths. The sailors cringed in terror. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wits end. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. Now think about this emotionally or whatever trial you're going through right now. Verse 29, he calmed the storm to a whisper and stilled the waves. Lord, calm your people's hearts. Still the storm in their life, Lord. What a blessing was that stillness as he brought them safely into harbor. How many know God's going to bring you safely out of a storm? Amen. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. Let them exalt him publicly before the congregation. We were praising God today. By the way, your singing was beautiful. Oh my goodness, it sounded like a chorus of angels in this place today. Thank you for singing your hearts out today. Now this is interesting. This is the sovereignty of God and what he can do. And it has to do with the wicked and the godly. Verse 33 says, he changes rivers into deserts and springs of water into dry, thirsty land. He turns the fruitful land into salty wastelands because of the wickedness of those who live there. So that's God's judgment on people. But he also turns deserts into pools of water. So now he can also be a blessing. The dry land into springs of water how many need spring of life right now in your heart and mind? He brings the hungry to settle there and to build their cities. They sow their fields, plant their vineyards, and harvest their bumper crops. How he blesses them. They raise large families there, and their herds of livestock increase. Now, here's the thing. Verse 39 and 40 talk about the oppression of leadership where these people are living, and God intervenes. Verse 39, when they decrease in number and become impoverished through oppression, trouble, and sorrow, the Lord pours contempt on their princes, causing them to wander in trackless wastelands. But he rescues the poor from trouble and increases their families like flocks of sheep. The godly will see these things and be glad while the wicked are struck silent. And then he says this, I read all that to read this one line, but I wanted you to see the context. Those who are wise will take all this to heart. They will see in our history the faithful love of the Lord. Whew. Okay, read all that. He took time to remember four situations that were not good at all and how God delivered whether it was their sin that got them in trouble or whether it was the weather that got them in trouble, whether it was just struggles of everyday life, when they cried out, God answered. Amen. Meanwhile, in Psalm 77, he felt like God wasn't answering yet. Can I just say this, that we need to let God be God and we need to be patient and let him do what he needs to do when he needs to do it. Amen? Amen. Hey, trust me. I'm right there with you. I want relief and deliverance, and I want to get out of the trial right away. I do, you know? But then I realize God is doing a work in me or working out the situation ahead of me. And I can't see what he sees, and so I need to trust him. I want to give you four takeaways to help us today. Considering these scriptures and the fact that we can go through things as Christians, we're not immune to them. Number one, when you're hurting or going through trials and tribulations, don't forget God's faithfulness. I don't know what it is, uh, but I've observed this personally in my own life and as helping other people that when we go through difficult times, it's like we have short-term memory loss of God's faithfulness. It's like we forget, I mean, God is so patient with me sometimes. 
Is he patient with you or what? Because, you know, you could, feel, you could feel like you're in despair, and he's like, oh, you silly Pastor Ryan, you. I just helped you two weeks ago. Did you forget that already? I mean, he puts up with us so much. I just took care of that thing that you're concerned about or worried about. I did it 10 times last year. You don't think I got this one too? But there's something about when things become overwhelming, it's like our emotions and those circumstances lie to us. And we have to, in the moment, do what these psalmists did and remember and recall the faithfulness of God. Here's some ways we forget God. We forget his faithfulness in the past, like I've said. We forget his presence in the present. He said, I will be with you. His spirit dwells in us, so he is with us through his Holy Spirit. And we forget his promises in the future. So we can forget him all around when we're going through a really difficult time. And it's even harder when we're going through a long trial. You know what I'm saying? When it's a long time, you are, you are looking up to heaven saying, God, are you there? I mean, we've even said things like this. God isn't there. And if he is, he doesn't care. Or God has forgotten us. In fact, Psalm 13 says this. And I'll show it to you on the screen, but I'm just going to let you see this because it's a short uh, time and we're running out of time here. We got 50 people to baptize today. So we're excited about that. But... Psalm 13, if you bring it up for me, look at the end here. He he goes through, how long will you forget me forever? Actually, I'm going to read it. It's just too good. Oh, Lord, how long will you forget me forever? How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? Turn and answer me, oh, Lord, my God. Restore the sparkle to my eyes. Yeah, you know, bring life back or I will die. Don't let my enemies gloat saying we have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. This is David dealing with Saul, okay? But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. David was looking ahead at what God's going to do. David would express his true heart, and then he would remember that God is faithful. So he got real, and then he recalled the truth. He acknowledged how he felt. And then he recalled who God is in his life. Amen. Amen. The Israelites, uh, especially in, in Jerusalem, uh, they were under the weight of, their, of judgment because of their sin. And they began to think that God forgot them. Isaiah 49, 14 through 16, it says this, Yet Jerusalem says, The Lord has deserted us. The Lord has forgotten us. And God speaks through Isaiah and says, Never can a mother forget her nursing child. Can she feel no love for the child she has born? Well, it does happen sometimes, and it's unfortunate. But here's the truth about God. But even if that were possible, I would not forget you. God sees you. Have you been hurt by mom or dad? Do you know that God will never forget you? God will never forget you. Why? I have written your name on the palms of my hands. He will never forget you. God made a covenant with his people. He will not forget his covenant. He keeps every promise. When you believed in Jesus Christ, you've been included in the new covenant. And he will not forget you. Sometimes when we go through things, we even ask. Romans 8 actually says this. Has God, does God not love me if I'm going through trials, if I'm suffering, if I'm going through things? Of course not. He loves you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. He loves you. Because you're going through things doesn't mean he doesn't love you. It's things that we have to go through at times. Unfortunately, we still live in a fallen, broken world. And again, that fallen, broken world, when we recognize that, it makes us turn back to God and look forward at what God has for us in the new heavens and new earth. In other words, we don't get settled with this earth. We're looking forward to the new one. God does not forget you. I want to encourage you today, don't forget God. One of the dangers of forgetting God is you'll try to get better on your own. 
or you'll try to get better using substances or things of this world, or you'll try to get better by using people. Don't forget God. He is the true source of healing. He is your true help. Lift your head back up. Your spouse cannot fix your brokenness. Can we help the journey? Absolutely. Your kids can't fix it. Kids, your parents can't fix your brokenness. We can only extend the grace of God, but ultimately it's God working through us, pointing people to God for ultimate healing. Just remember that. And listen, if you're using things in this world to help you get through painful times, you'll continue to repeat that again and again and again. There's no hope in that. There's no hope. It never fixes us on the inside. That's what Pastor Joey was trying to point us to, is looking to God for ultimate healing. I want to encourage you to go to God. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it can be difficult to go to God and let him work on you and heal you and, and do the greater work that none of us can do. But in the end, you'll get greater results than going to anything or anyone else. And of course, we as a church should help you go through that journey right alongside you. How do we remember God, though, in the middle of our hurt? It's actually really simple, by keeping God's word in our hearts. Storing his word in our heart and our mind. All right, now listen, the Bible helps us uh, remember the perfect record of God's faithfulness. And this is a strong reason to read through the Bible and to read the Old Testament too, not just the New Testament. The Bible will help buffer those feelings. And and will tell the lies the truth. God's word will. And I want to encourage you with this. I want to encourage you to also keep record yourself. And I need to do a better job of this myself. But I want to encourage you to get a notebook or a journal or, or use your phone. Pull out your notepad on your phone and begin to write all the times that God has been faithful to you. Begin to write all the good things that God has done for you. So when you're going through it, you open it up and you look at it. You open your Bible and you open your notebook and you go, God is good. I'm going through it, but God is good. I'm going through it. I'm getting through it. And I'm going to get through it. All right. Now, look, I know this sounds like a TED talk a little bit, but this is the gospel. Okay. This is about as most, this is the most motivational speech you'll hear from me. Cause I got some practical things to share with you today as well. Uh, secondly, don't forget those around you. When you're going through trials, tribulations, hurt, pain, don't forget things around uh, those around you. Here's why. God has placed amazing, loving people in your life to help you. Amen. Allow them in. And in fact, would you let them know how they can help you? Because we're not that good at it sometimes. I love it when someone says, look, I, I don't want you to fix me. I just need you to listen to me. Because I'm that, my, my nature is to fix things. When I see something broken, I just want to fix it, you know? I, I'm pretty sure if I was sitting next to my wife last week, she would have easily dug her elbow into my ribs when Pastor Jody said, don't fix people. I think you sound just like that. Anyway. That, I mean, that's my tendency, you know? And sometimes the best thing to do is to explain to people what would work best to help you. Amen? So, don't forget those around you. You ready for this? Don't forget to enjoy those around you. I've been there. I've been there. When I'm on vacation and all I can think about is my trial. When I had a great day at church and the next day all I can think about is a trial. It's 75 degrees out. The birds are chirping. But to me, it's dark and gloomy. Can you, you know what I'm talking about? Amen. I got kids. I got a wife. I got friends. I got an amazing church around me. I should not forget to enjoy those around me. In fact, I think, I think that's a way to heal. I think that's a way to heal, to actually enjoy those around you. The devil doesn't want you to. The devil wants you to stay stuck in a pit. God doesn't. The devil wants you to see, look, this, I got these right here. 
These are my solar eclipse glasses. I couldn't see a thing, by the way, until I looked up. Did you hear what I just said, though? I couldn't see a thing until I looked up. And when I looked up, I saw the sun without being blinded, okay? <laughs> I've been in times where I've walked around life like this, just looking around and everything is dark and gloomy. Meanwhile, people are full of the joy of the Lord, all right? And I didn't resent them for it. I wasn't bitter that they're happy and I'm not. All I know is, is I was in a dark place and sometimes we need people to bump us out of that and remind us of the truth. But sometimes we need to actively just enjoy those around us because God has placed them in our lives. Turn off your brain for a moment and have fun with your kids and your spouse and your friends. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. amen. You're not the only one hurting too, just so you know. Amen. You're not the only one hurting. And in fact, in our grief share, that's a healing moment. When our grief share group gets together, and they're hurting together because they've lost loved ones, they help each other heal. And they actually realize how much they've healed by helping someone else heal. By being there for someone, they've been there for a year and someone's brand new into it and they help someone who just came in, they realize, oh my goodness, I have actually grown. I've, I'm getting through this. It's painful, it will always be painful, okay? Grief of a loved one, is it will always be there but they realize how much God has healed them and helped them when they help other people. You're not the only one hurting and your story can help other people's stories, amen? I wanna do a sensitive point here, okay? Please hear me out, I'm not trying to invalidate pain. I just felt very prompted by the Lord to say this. I wanna encourage you with this as well because I've been there. Be mindful of your journey's influence on those closest to you. What I mean is, be mindful and careful that your hurt or your trial is not overflowing and hurting those around you to the point that now they can't handle it or they can't help or they are struggling as well. There needs to be a moment where the grace needs to be applied and that we allow God to work on us as everyone is helping around us. This is a sensitive point because it depends on the situation. And some journeys are really long. Do you understand me? So we got to be extremely patient with people. But listen, I don't want my stress or my trial to hurt my kids. I don't want it to hurt my spouse. And I'm so grateful when we've all shown grace and mercy. But I do believe this, that we should also do the work on our end to get better. If we want people to be gracious, I agree but we also need to be gracious to ourselves and get help. And I wanna say this important thing too, do not hurt yourself. Amen. Do not harm yourself. Amen. We love you. We don't want you to do anything that would hurt yourself. We are here for you, all right? Can I get an amen for that? Amen. We do not wanna see people go down that path. Amen. You are worth more than what you are going through, that, that feeling, you are important. People see you. Don't forget those around you. You have loving people ready to help you, all right? And we do not want you to hurt yourself. So what I'm saying is don't suffer in silence. Let people in. And don't be afraid to share. Look, I just read to you, we're trying to be a safe church. I just read to you some pretty raw psalms about people feeling pretty down and dark. we rather you share how you're feeling so we can help than suffer in silence, amen? And let's be mindful that we're careful of those around us because while I'm trying to help, I'm not the greatest at it all the time. So thank you for the grace as well for those around you. In all these situations, we really need a crossroads moment. We need a... a, a uh, a defining moment with God where we just totally let him work on us or even let professional help, that is Christian professional help, work on us. We need to have a moment where we let God confront our pain 
endure the trial ahead, pursue healing, and then even show grace to everyone around us. How many know this, that even when you're hurting, you can still show grace to people? That's God. The fact that you're going through something, I've seen this. I have seen the resilience of people that even when they're going through things, they can actually be helping or showing grace to others around them. That's beautiful. That is a testimony of God's grace in their life. All right, two more points real quick. When you're hurting or going through trials, you ready for this? Don't forget to live. Wow, profound. Don't forget to live. I'm saying have fun today. Have fun today. Do you know what's worse than dying? You know what's worse than dying? Not living when you're alive. Live for God. We can have tunnel vision and see life only through our broken lenses. For example, you could go out on that beautiful day and not even notice how beautiful it is. And we'll go through those moments. But let me tell you something, church. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay there. And I want to share this too. Life is too short to be stuck in a pit. Life is too short to hold things against people. Life is too short to hold on to things you can't change. Jesus came to give you life. He wants to give you life. Sometimes we have to remember we are called to live. And I'm telling you, today you should live. I know it's not 75 and sunny. I get it. But this is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice in it. (laughs) Lastly, don't forget to surrender and believe. I have had to just surrender my trials to the Lord. I'm not saying I just do nothing to help. Obviously, everything I said will help. Okay, remembering God will help. Remembering those around me to help me will help. Remembering to live helps. But sometimes you just have to surrender because everything that you, how the way you want it to be done, how it can be done is not the way God's going to do it. Uh, This has been a, a reoccurring theme in my life for the past few months. That if I surrender to God's ways, it's much better than my way. I, I think about this with, with family members praying for the salvation of their loved ones. You got to let them be in the hands of God. And I'm telling you, we're seeing God bring kids home. Prodigal daughters and sons are coming to God. They're coming to God. The power of God's grace in healing and deliverance is very powerful, amen? But it's only effective when it's applied. We have to surrender trying to do things our way, fix ourselves, and now appropriate and receive the grace that God is saying. I want it. This is what we were, I was talking about this earlier during worship. God is ready to deliver today if we will apply his grace because between grace and grace applied is surrender and faith. Because you surrender your ways and believe that God's going to fix things instead of whatever you're trying to do. And I'm telling you, it works. It just doesn't always happen overnight, as we read in our Psalms. I read this poem this week by Helen Steiner Rice. It's called A Bend in the Road. I forgot a cool picture of a bend in the road, so you'll have to envision this. Sometimes we come to life's crossroads we view what we think is the end. But God has a much wider vision. He knows that's only a bend. The road will go on and get smoother, and after we've stopped for a rest, the path that lies hidden beyond us is often the path that is best. So rest and relax and grow stronger. Let go and let God share your load and have faith in a brighter tomorrow You just come to a bend in the road. Amen. Let go and rest. Wouldn't you stand with me? Lord, help us to let go and rest in you today. God, you are the driver. We said take the wheel. (laughs) Okay. Lord, drive us. 
Help us to see that it's just a bend in the road. Romans 12, 12, Paul told this to the church. Rejoice in our confident hope. He's talking about the hope of Jesus' return. Be patient in trouble because we're going to have trouble and keep on praying. See, he didn't say avoid it. He didn't say, here's how you get out of it. Here's, here's how you never have trouble. No, he said, rejoice in our confident hope. Look ahead. Be patient in trouble right now and keep on praying. Keep on looking to the Lord. I just want you to notice something. I didn't teach you some three-step method of overcoming your trial or fixing your hurt. I didn't do that because there, there is no method. There is no three-step method to, to overcome trials or something like that. All I know is there's God. And all I reminded us to do today is when we're going through it, don't forget God. Remember. Remember, I've been there. Watch. I, it's going to happen again. And the Lord's going to say, remember me. Remember what I did for you. Don't forget what I did for you. And when I read the word, he's going to remind me as well. As a kid, I sang a song here growing up called Great is Thy Faithfulness. I asked Pastor Arya to lead us in a couple uh, verses of this song because sometimes even worship reminds me of his faithfulness. It does all the time. This song, just a practical reminder of his faithfulness. If you need prayer today, we're going to be up here for a moment before our water baptism. So our prayer team is ready if they want to respond. If you need Jesus for salvation, I want to let you know there is no other hope except for Jesus. And if you need to start a relationship with him today, we want to help you with that decision. So we're, we're ready to pray with you, ready to pray with you about anything. Would you just surrender and just trust the Lord today that great is his, his faithfulness? Amen.